Welcome to Insight. Today we're chatting with Shannon Easter White, trustee of the Flint Institute of Arts, who has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us in Flint. And Shannon, thank you so much for coming today. Thank you it's for It's just having great me. to have you. You work with so many different organizations mm -hmm. across this community. You've lived in this community. You have a business in this community. Let's talk a little bit about Flint and let's create a setting for this wonderful institution, the Flint Institute of Arts, but within Flint and amongst other great institutions. Could you talk a little bit about your perspective of how you see Flint, uh, your the cultural uh, landscape that you have and the educational landscape that you have here? Sure. Um, well, I would say I'm just a kid from Flint and uh, I was born and raised here. I went to high school here. I went to the University of Michigan and have my bachelor's and my master's in architecture and said I would never come back to Flint and here I am. Um, I'm 44 years old and have two kids that I love raising in this community. We come frequently here to the Flint Institute of Arts for art classes. They've been playing clay since they were two. I've taken a lot of classes in glass blowing and acrylics and loom weaving and all kinds of stuff with a group of friends that uh, sort of come and go whenever they can. And you're in a creative profession. Talk about how that idea of art and the idea of business actually meld together because Flint, you know, with its renowned history as sort of the center of, of General sure. Motors for a very long time. And then we had the departure of General Motors and the reinvention of this area. Yeah. Now, it really is about design. It is about design thinking, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I always say to my clients um, and to my kids, uh, the design matters. So, I mean, you can't separate General Motors from design, right? Everybody wants their car to be the, the most efficient, the most safe, but you're not gonna buy it if it's really ugly. And I would say the same is true of architecture and our landscape and the community that we live in. So, I mean, my professional career is very much focused on making things that uh, are well-designed, quite frankly. And I think that Flint has a lot to offer in the surrounding communities in terms of um, cultural institutions. I would say ours is world-class. Describe the campus around here because it's, it's really fascinating. You have a dialogue yeah. between these different institutions. You have the the Flint Institute of Arts, yeah, um, and and you have not only a museum, but you also have an art school, yeah. And then around here, there are other institutions. Could you describe some of those? Institutions? Yeah, you betcha. So I think probably one of our most hidden gems is the is uh, Applewood Estate, which is right next door. A plethora of learning opportunities about agriculture and science, about art, technology, engineering. It was the birthplace or the uh, the. Uh, homestead and gentleman's working farm for Charles Stewart Ma, who was the founder of General Motors, one of the, one of the ch early chairmen of the board. Um, we have Whiting, uh, which is a, an amazing performance arts venue, seats about 2,500. I think 2,300, more, yeah. more than 2,000. More than 2,000. This and 25, somewhere in Always there. Broadway musicals. We have a, a really robust symphony following. The Flint Symphony Orchestra performs there, um, in addition to many many other programs. Ch Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is coming next week, so so we're excited about that. And then you have the Sloan Museum that is that is undergoing so uh, museum uh, of, real of, reconstruction now? Yeah, science and innovation and discovery, which is great. They will have um, showcasing Buick Gallery, which was another institute uh, within the community campus, but now we'll have even better exhibit space. And I think Sloan is going to be much more of a hands-on museum than a um, the, the historical component will still be there, but just really bang up cool stuff uh, for kids and families alike. And then the Flint Public Library, which is next door uh, to the south, is spectacular. Also undergoing, um, you know, over 20 million in renovation and construction, rebranding and re-envisioning itself as a new um, media and, and uh Library and a superb planetarium. You also have yeah. have uh, that facility, and then around the I think it's the second largest geodesic dome in in uh, maybe in the world, and we were second only to London in our uh, digital technology. The shows yes. there are spectacular. It's amazing. It's amazing. And 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 then around there, built around there, there are all these educational institutions. Well, in the Flint Institute of Music too, we forgot about oh. that. 
So uh, talk a little bit about the Flint Institute. Yeah, of music. so I mean, the Flint Institute of Music has also the Flint School of Performing Arts, um, coupled with the Flint Cultural Center Academy, mm -hmm. which is also on this campus. The kids are learning. Um, I mean, two days a week they're learning violin or piano. They're doing uh, improv comedy, which we didn't talk about that, which is at uh, the theater next door. Um, so that's super exciting called The Rep, and it's a performing arts theater. Uh, the Flint Institute of Music also has had the Joffrey Ballet. It has summertime camps with the best of the best in singing and dance and all kinds of performing arts. Um, have really we've really developed some amazing art artists and musicians. And then around that, you have this whole educational uh, architecture yep. uh, for, for uh, young kids, preschool uh, K through twelve. Uh, you have a fantastic group of, of higher education organizations from yeah. community colleges to four-year colleges to master and doctorate degrees uh, all around that. And and as an architect, as somebody who's in the creative uh, elements, do you feel like there is um, a dialogue between the creative side and these various educational institutions that are educating the future leaders of this region of the United States? Yeah, I mean, I think simply by the the uh, geographic closeness of uh, Kettering University, the University of Michigan, Flint, uh, Michigan State University, all which have presence and campus right in downtown. In fact, Michigan State's uh, investing another forty million in their public health. Uh, school, which is r located right on the same campus as our Flint Farmers Market, uh, School of Public Health and College of Human Medicine uh, fellows and and residents go through a program which is located at the top. It's the, ch the Hurley Children's uh, Pediatric um, mm -hmm. Office is on, uh, at the, on the second floor of the Flint Farmers Market building. And so uh, during the Flint water crisis, they were literally prescribing fruits and vegetables and dairy products that they knew mitigated lead. Right. So it was just a re really wonderful collaborative. And then that with nutrition is, you know, they're doing all kinds of cool cooking classes in collaboration with college campuses, with businesses. Um, ELGA Credit Union is you know, sponsoring. The cultural, the cultural yeah. Center Academy, which is yeah. um, which is yeah. a charter school. Yeah. Um, and, and they're giving classes here. Yeah. Uh, being taught by members of the Flint Institute of Arts faculty. The, the premise of that academy curriculum is that they use the cultural center institutions for their art, for anything STEAM related. Mm -hmm. So they're doing their science and their technology in partnership with Sloan. They're doing their art here at the Art Institute. They're doing their music, like I said, a couple of days a week. Uh, the kids are learning, uh, aside from general music instruction, they're, all, they're learning violin and piano lessons. Um, it's really an amazing, they're, um, um, when my kids were attending there, they were doing improv comedy. I mean, things that were really just building character of, of the individual. Is this the thing that made Flint for you a special place that that caused you to make your home here? Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about about Flint as a home. A Flint is a place to invest a life in. Well, I mean, we always joke joke that you know if you really wanted to, there's there's a, literally dozens of things happening every single day. Your calendar could be totally full of there's there's not a lack of things to do here. And specifically at the Art Institute, I think our programming has really evolved over time to have been historically about my husband laughs and says about old brown paintings and the Art Institute has a lot of old brown paintings. But wow, I mean, we have uh, art series, lectures, we have uh, film series, we have in the evenings uh, things that raise money for um, animal causes and their cocktail parties. We have a variety of different parties and celebrations throughout the year, whether they're cultural or having to do with a particular uh, opening or exhibition. The exhibition that I walked through just now, which is photographs of African-American men. Flint Sons. All from Flint. Yeah. And it starts off with this astounding gallery of just the faces mm -hmm. suspended in a sea of, of a black background. They're yeah. just faces. Yeah. Everybody is just the face. Mm -hmm. And then the stories start to unfold. Could you yeah. talk a little bit about that exhibition? 
Yeah, I mean, the stories are what makes makes Flint such an amazing place. Uh, the people are the fabric of this community. And so um, that exhibition speaks volumes. You you see the face and in, and in a room of faces, if you don't know anything about any of those people, you, you might just chalk it up to, oh, it's a gallery of portraits or something. But when you read the amazing stories of the individuals who are in the exhibition, it's really, it really talks about history and past and present and where we're going as a community and hope for the future. I think that it's really remarkable. And the artist creating those portraits yeah. is, is just amazing. When I look at them, I feel like the portrait is speaking with me. Mm. And then as I go into the next gallery where the, the next portrait of that same person is in their street clothes or the clothes that they choose to be identifiers of themselves. Sure. And then, they, then there are interviews and those interviews are recorded where they talk about their experience as black men yeah. and the racism that they have experienced and how they've dealt with it their own lives, right? What they're doing is they're sharing with me, a white guy who comes from outside of Flint, sure. their story. They're giving me a journey. And that is just, just amazing. That is just an amazing accomplishment to have, to have presented this. And the artist is from Flint. Yeah, and I think that the that the Art Institute does a really remarkable job of um, like what I love about that particular this particular exhibition currently is that it's marrying film with portrait photography with the art of the individual, and so it's storytelling, it's it's photography, and then the personality as well, and it's as if they're really speaking to you. And I think the Art Institute does a nice job of doing a lot of mixed media events as well. Um, you know, uh, a sculpture, but that looks like some something else or, or that appears like a still life. And the Arctic Fox sculpture was in the Star Wars movies, the one where they're on the frozen moon. Uh -huh. And, and so it was the inspiration for the characters in the movie. And I just, I, th I love that sort of blending of, um, mixed media. Right. We're talking about change. We're talking about these institutions promoting change in a, in a region. Uh, another cool part for me, so we're, I think, the second largest or third largest art school in America affiliated with a museum in Little Old Flint. I love it. I love telling people that. And so a, another, it's generationally changing even for the generation that is retired. Mm -hmm. So we have some really incredible skilled trade welders. And guess what? We have like the most amazing welding studio and they come in and now they're no longer working to weld something in the shop, but they're welding to make garden stakes, really amazing sculptures. Um, they're putting their creative use um, and it's being facilitated by this institution, which is so cool. They're, they're using a really particular skill um, in a really artful and innovative way. And I think that that's really cool. A maker region. Yeah, for sure. The makers of the past, helping to educate the makers yeah. of the future. What a great, great way to, to cap the, uh, this discussion. Shannon Easter White, thank you so much for sharing your experience as a trustee of the Flint Institute of Arts and as a trustee of other organizations mm -hmm. here. Thank you for sharing the wonderful, wonderful experiences that you've had with Flint. My pleasure. Sharing is caring. And I really, I care deeply about this community.